All right, to briefly talk about saving, it's pretty easy. You just hit Control S, and it'll give you an option to save a file name. I've, I've already saved this one. So you can just go ahead and hit uh, OK for the, the version description if you want. You can, I guess, add a description. But uh, what it'll do is it'll save it to the cloud, and then it will periodically, like fairly regularly, save. I just saved another one. So it saves, auto saves really pretty frequently. And then the great thing is it actually saves them to the cloud. So you can go ahead and from any computer, as long as you're, you're logged in, you can have access to all of your files. So a few of these are, are stuff that I made at work uh, and I am now at home. So that's kind of convenient. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another sketch here. So I'm gonna make a, a hit create sketch. Now I could add more stuff to this sketch, but if you combine sketches, they can, they'll can actually talk to each other and interfere with one another. So sometimes you want that, and uh, but in this case, I'm gonna try to keep it simple. So I'm gonna go to create sketch, and it's basically gonna wanna know, okay, where do you want me to put the plane? And you can see it's kind of aligning the grid to wherever I am mousing over. Now what I want is for it to be this plane right here, but it's assuming because this is kind of the first plane that the mouse is hitting that I'm looking for that one. So the solution is I'm just going to mouse over the area that I want and hold the left mouse button and then I can release it. So it understands that there is something under the mouse that I want to use as my, um, my, my sort of surface here to draw the sketch on, but it's not sure what. So it says here are all the things. So there's the outer face and then the work plane, which is what I want, and then the bottom face. So I'm going to go ahead and click work plane. And we'll make a new sketch here. So I'm just going to uh, now go to the rectangle. And I'll make a two-point rectangle. And we can go ahead and snap to the grid. And I think there's a, there's a thing with the grid where you can... It might not be available in the sketch, but it does update depending on your zoominess. Uh, the grid size will, will change so you can actually get finer and finer detail. But in this case, this is totally fine. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, Let's see, we'll click here, and I'll just drag out some shape like that. And we can go ahead and hit OK. So I'll hit Stop Sketch. And so now I've got this piece here, and what I want to do is create a piece of geometry that I can then use to cut a slot out of this, uh, this blocky thing here. So I'm going to do a right click, we'll do another press pull operation, and I'm going to do two sides here. And instead of symmetric, we're actually going to do two sides because this thing is sort of a different height from top to bottom. And I want to show you kind of a neat feature. Rather than distance, you can actually select two as an option. And then you can uh, select the arrow that you want, to what, like which direction you're going to go, and then the surface that you want to go to. Now what that's going to do is it'll say, I uh, didn't actually like that. Let me try that again. Press pull, we'll go distance two. And maybe because it's a curve, it isn't it isn't really digging on that. So I'll show you that once I have kind of a flat a flat edge that I can uh, uh, work with. But for now, just to keep it simple, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it up. And you can see it turns red. And the operation here is cut. Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make this two sides so I can cut all the way through the shape. And, but I don't want to cut it yet because I need to make it symmetrical. So I'm going to actually mirror this, uh, this cutting shape here. So rather than cut, I'm going to select new body and hit OK. So now I'd like to mirror this. The way I'm going to do that is go to create and then mirror. And I'll select the object. You can see this, uh, this objects here. There's no selection. So I just grab that. And what it actually did is it grabbed the face. What I want to do is grab the whole body. So I'm going to select this option. Try that one more time. And for the mirror plane, go ahead and select that. What I want for the mirror plane is gonna be this guy right here, but the system doesn't understand or prioritize the work planes. It just understands what's underneath the mouse. So once again, I'll just hold left mouse button and we'll go to work plane and say, okay. And there we go. It is now a nice symmetrical piece of geometry, which I can use in a cutting operation. So I'm going to go to modify and combine. So we've got the target body, which is going to be the thing we're going to have at the end of the day, end of the operation there. And then we've got our tool body. So I'll go ahead and select that. And I can either join it, I can cut it, or I can intersect it. So standard Boolean type stuff there. I'm going to select cut and say OK. And there we are, a nice clean cut. And if I wanted to, I could 
presumably come in. Let's see if I can throw a fillet on this guy. Oops. Try that one more time. I'll do a fillet. So I'm just doing a shift select here and I can add, add a little value. So yeah, no problem, happy to fillet that for me. And I could even come in and probably fillet this inside edge here. So let's try that again. We'll do a fillet here and a fillet here and we'll make that two. So you can see what's going on. These are the kinds of things that would be fairly difficult to do already in a, in a program like um, a ZBrush, which I love and use all the time, but these kinds of exact rounded uh, edges over curved surfaces, irregular uh, edges like this is, is a pretty tricky thing to do. So I can, if I want, sort of come back and look at the geometry here. And so there's my mirroring operation. You can see it kind of highlighting there. There's my push-pull operation. Here's where I rounded some of those edges, rounded some more edges. There's the combination, so that's the, uh, the subtract. So if I want, I can actually come back in time here just a bit, go back and grab this, this, uh, this shape and modify it. So I'm going to do a press pull, and we'll just go ahead and maybe slide it back a little bit further and hit OK. So what that means is all of these edges now are different. All I got to do is kind of roll this guy forward, and it'll rethink everything. And yeah, something in there didn't actually work out, and you can see where the problem is. We changed some things around. So I can actually just come in and delete that, and we can try that one more time. And uh, so if I just click on this, you can see it's going to try to grab that entire edge there, and that's because I have the tangent chain option turned on. If I turn that off, I can actually go through and select kind of each component of this edge, but uh, tangent chain in this case is totally fine. It's exactly what I want. And I'm going to go ahead and grab these inside edges too, so that uh, it can all be handled at the same time. So let's try with one. One's fine. Sometimes I like to kind of work my way up here because you'll get to a certain point and it, it does actually break. So and I, I wouldn't necessarily advocate for, for rounding off all the edges because it does kind of give the geometry a sort of a nice um, machined look if you have some edges rounded and some edges kind of sharp. So we can sort of walk back in time and modify the geometry there. We can create geometry with sketches and we can also just create sort of basic primitives here and append them directly to the geometry, either as uh, um, you know connecting the geo or intersecting the geo or using it as a negative. So I'm going to come to create. We'll go to cylinder, and I would actually like to put a little cylinder somewhere on one of these rounds here that kind of mirrors or, or matches the, uh, uh, the the origin for this this rounded uh, corner here. So I'm going to select this edge and then if if I get close to it, it's a little bit of an annoying thing and in some of the demos they actually do the same kind of thing and there's a little mark there so it may be a feature of the fact that this is a brand new program but if you kind of poke around you can usually find it. So I'm going to put this thing right there and I'm just going to do a little click and then I, I, I'm not holding the uh, left mouse button down uh, I, I just clicked it and I'm dragging out. I'll do another click and you can see now it's giving me an option to either pull a piece of geometry out this way or push it in. So I can cut all the way through like that and so that's totally fine. I'll go ahead and say OK there. And once again I can come in and, and uh, you can either do the operation and select the edges or you can select the edges and then come up and say I want to chamfer that. And uh, let's see what a 2 looks like. That's great. So this is obviously just some kind of like piece that you could maybe put into like a random little pivoty kind of thing. But uh, this is already, I think this would be a, a fairly uh, complicated shape to build using really any other program. And it would be very difficult to do it in, you know, 20 minutes while explaining your way around. So uh, in the next uh, next lesson here, we'll just keep talking about some of these shapes. We'll, we'll maybe talk about forms here a bit and uh, maybe some of the additional options that are available using the, uh, the sketches. So stick around.